So far there are balls, boxes and capsules moving, colliding and rotating on the canvas. In this episode I create a star class by combining two triangle shapes, so at the end the star objects can also join the other bodies. The point of this episode is going through the creation and integration of a new body class and that class will be the star. The reason I chose that is that it requires to introduce a new shape class as well that I was going to do anyway and that's the triangle. First I will make a triangle shape and then the star will be the combination of two equilateral triangles that have the same center points and one of them is upside down. This requires some planning, so before I go to the VS code, I need to find answers to some questions, like what should be the arguments that define a triangle? They will be the three coordinate points of the vertices. What should count as the center point of the triangle? There are so many different triangle centers, here are some of them, and I chose the centroid, because that's also the center of mass, and I wanted the triangle to rotate around that point. And it's also the mean average of the vertex coordinates, so it's easy to calculate. The initial direction will point from the central point to the first vertex, and as for the draw method, it will simply connect the vertices by lines. And once I have an idea about the basic attributes of the shape, I go to the spot where I have already created the shape classes but haven't started the body classes yet, and make a class called triangle with three vertices a position vector as the average of the vertices, then I create a draw method, which is basically the same as for the rectangle, but with one less vertex, so I can copy it from the rectangle class and delete the last drawing line. Now the get vertices method will be trickier. I can get the new direction vector by multiplying the rotation matrix by the reference direction, like I did for the other shapes, but that won't help me to find the vertices. First of all, I have this rotmx function, and I want it to be a method of the matrix class. And instead of returning with a new matrix every time, it will just change the values of the rotation matrix property of the shape class. I change it in the rectangle class, and then I use it in the triangle class as well to get the new direction. Then what I do is that when I'm creating the triangle, I will also create an array in the constructor that stores a reference vector for each vertex. Those vectors point to the vertices from the center point, and I use the rotation matrix for each of them to get the new endpoints of the rotated vectors. And if I add those vectors to the center point, then I will get the new vertex values of the triangle. And to test if the triangle class works, and if the triangle object rotates properly, I go down, comment out the creation of the 10 random objects, I will use them again once I'm finished with the star class and I create a new triangle instead and then in the main loop I call its get vertices and draw methods plus I keep changing its current angle. And then let's check if it's working and it's not working and the reason for that is that I gave the same values of the three vertices in the constructor. By the way I forgot to tell but this this diam it stands for diameter. I'm not sure if it's the best expression for a line segment that connects the central point with the vertex. So I just wanted to make clear what I meant by this. But anyway, let's see the canvas. And with the correct vertex values, I can see the triangle slowly rotating. And that's good because now that I have the triangle shape, I'm ready to build a body class that has two of those triangles as components. I can get some inspiration for this from the capsule class, since that's also a body object built of different components. What I do first actually is just copy everything from the capsule class to the star class, because they have so much in common. Then I leave the constructor for later in the star class. First I go through the methods. The draw method is almost the same, but with just two shapes to draw. The key control is good as it is, and the reposition is also not bad, although it's important to notice that unlike the capsule, the star objects will have two shape components that can rotate, 
which means that I will have to change the angle property of both of the components and then call the get vertices method for the second component as well. So that's it for the smaller changes. And to find the initial vertices in the constructor, I will need some planning again. So what arguments do I need to define a star object? I would go with the central point and the radius, same as for the ball. And in that case, I will have the challenge of finding the vertices of the two triangles based on these two details. So the star object will be the combination of two equilateral triangles. This is one of them, meaning that the length of their three edges are the same. Let's call that A. By using the Pythagorean theorem, I can find out that this edge here will have the length of square root 3 over 2 times A. And that means that if I want the relation between A and R, which is the radius, the distance between our vertex and the central point, then A equals radius times square root 3. This edge will be half of that, that will be square root 3 over 2. So to find the first vertex from the central point, I go up by R, then to find the other two vertices, I go to the opposite direction by half R, and then left and right from there by R times square root 3 per 2. And that's how I can find the three vertices from the central point when the length of the radius is given. So I go and implement it. And once I found those vertices, I use them as arguments for creating a triangle shape. And I push the triangle into the component array of the star object. And in the constructor, I will also need to provide the value for the inertia, but I will come back later for that. For now, I will just give something that's not too unrealistic. I will give it 2 times radius square over 12. And I can already create a star object now instead of the triangles, but it will have some problems with the separating axis theorem. But I just try it. I don't need to call the method specifically because it's a body object. The star object is added to the body's array at the instantiation. After instantiating the star object, I should be able to see it on the canvas, but it won't work yet. So it's here and... Oh, what? I'm actually really surprised that it does some rotation after colliding, because I didn't define the projection axis for the triangle shape in the separating axis theorem. And I will definitely need to do that, because even if the triangle shape is using some axis for projection, those are definitely not the correct ones. Usually, if I add a new body to the engine, I don't need to bother with the separating axis theorem, as long as the body is built of components that are already known in the SAT. But now that's not the case, because I add the triangle shape. And the SAT function doesn't know exactly what to do with it. I mean, it has some guess, as I saw just now, but I need to define the projection axis. So I go to the find axis function, which is here the second one. And except for this special case where both objects are circles and then the function returns with the one single axis, I'm going to create a condition for each of the shapes, the circle, the line, the rectangle, and the triangle. For the triangle, there will be three axes, the three perpendicular lines to the edges. And after that, I copy all these conditions and check to the other object as well, the O2. And one more thing I need to do in the separating axis theorem is that I need to tell in the get shape axis function that if the object is a triangle, then the number of the axes will be 3. And I check this first with one single circle. Looks like a nice collision to me. And then I comment back this loop here that creates the 10 objects. 
and modify it a little bit so that it can also provide some random star objects. I will still have 10 new objects, but I will use modulo 4 instead of modulo 3, so that it will create 3 balls, 3 boxes, 2 capsules and 2 stars. And I also delete this additional star object. And now I should be able to see the collisions on the canvas. So this is how it looks like. Originally I was planning to make the inertia value of the star object a little more accurate. So I googled how the triangle shape's inertia needs to be calculated and I decided that actually it will be fine as it is. It rotates pretty okay. But still there are some smaller changes I would m like to make here. For example, this creating edges around the canvas. It looks like something I can use often, so I create a function that does it and then I either call it or not, depending on the situation. I will call this function put walls around the canvas. Another thing is that I found a typo in the line class. By looking for the position property, the dividing by two part should go here. Another thing is that I'm going to create a set method for the vector class, mainly so that I can make its values to 0, 0 or basically anything else. I'm going to use it later when I introduce forces because they will need to be set to zero in the beginning of every game loop. But I can use it now as well at some spots on the bottom of the key control methods here. And lastly, there are now many lines in the code that I don't need, so I can delete them. So right now I have like 960 lines and I go up and starting with this finding the closest points between two line segments. Where is it here? All the way through the older collision resolution methods that I'm not using anymore. Until the SAT function that I definitely need. I can delete all the lines and I also get rid of this momentum calculator function. And now I have only like 830, 820 something lines. That's good. I made the code a bit shorter and the file a bit smaller. I just need to make sure that everything works the same. Nothing's ruined. And yeah, it still works. So I'm not quite sure what will come next. I will surely keep working on something and I will also make videos of that because that helps me a lot to understand what I'm actually doing. But I wouldn't promise anything about the details right now. So, goodbye.